Hello everyone, my name is Abdur Anwar and welcome to the C-Star Roundup. First of all, I want to thank everyone who sent in some data for our last target. Today we'll be processing that data, so you're welcome to download the stacked image from the link in the description of this video and follow along. As usual, I'll only be using free programs for processing all the data I have received. And at the end of the video, I'll announce the target for the next month and this is a target you don't want to miss. For instructions on how to transfer data from your C-Star to the computer, check out the link in the description of this video or check out the previous video. Now to get started, here is how to upload the data from your computer onto the server so that it reaches me. Once you have copied the files over from the C-Star to your computer, we need to zip up all of these files to upload them. So simply select all of the files. On Windows, we can do that by hitting Control A to select all of the files, then simply right clicking and clicking Compress to Zip File. And that will compress all of the files into one zip folder that we can upload. Once you have the zip file, you can click on the link in the description of this video and that will take you to this page. Now you simply hit Select Files and select that zipped folder and click open. Now you simply need to type in your first and last name so we can give you proper credit for the files you submitted. And then simply hit upload. And as soon as you see this confirmation screen saying upload has finished, you are all done. So first thing to do is to make sure that you have Cyril and you have Graxpert. So this is Graxpert 3.1.0 RC2. And I've placed a link in the description below for this one as well along with Cyril. So this uh, is my general process for processing images from the C-Star. The first thing we're going to do here is to crop the image in Graxpert. So we'll go to the very top here, uh, step number two, click on the plus sign. And when you do that, you see this yellow box come around the image. So we're just going to resize that box a little bit and uh, we'll better frame the nebula and also we'll get rid of any of those uglier edges out there uh, which are caused by field rotation. And in the future, uh, once ZWO officially releases the equatorial mode for the C-Star, we might experiment with uh, taking some data and processing it with that as well. Uh, but for now, uh, cropping the image allows us to get rid of a lot of the field rotation in the outer edges of the image. So once we've done that, we'll click Apply Crop. And that has done a good job. Next, we'll move on to background extraction, which is step number two. So in Graxbird, we basically follow these four steps uh, in a line going from the top to the bottom. So we've done the crop and we'll go to background extraction, click on the plus over there. And if this is the first time you're using Graxbird, you might have to select the AI model over here. And I want to leave it at AI. Also on the very right side of the screen where it says advanced, if you click on that, um, you may have to come down here and select the background extraction model. Just select the latest version of that for object deconvolution, select the latest version of that. So basically just go down this list and select the latest version, which is at the very top of each of these. Once you've done that, you can click on advanced again to close that menu. We'll leave everything else as is and just click calculate background. So now the background looks a lot smoother and more even without any gradients. So next you can go down to deconvolution, click on the plus there. Now for deconvolution, there are two options. There is stars only or there is object only. And these two options are only in the latest version of Graxpert, which is the beta version 3.1.02 RC2. So first of all, select object only. And for the object itself, we can turn up the deconvolution strength. So I'm just going to turn that up pretty high to about 0.8. Image full width half maximum. We could leave that as is at the default. And then we'll click deconvolve image. And that should bring out the details a little bit better. There we go. Now to see before and after, we can go up to the tab over here and just click on this is the previous one, gradient correction, and then deconvolve only. So it did sharpen up the image, uh, the nebula itself a good bit, uh, but it did not affect any of the stars. So for that, we're going to go to 
this uh, arrow and select stars only for number two. And for deconvolution strength, I'll just bring it down to about 0 0.3 for the stars only. Click on deconvolve again. Okay, that is done. So I think the stars do look sharper now. If we go back to the previous step, which was objects only, as you can see, the stars are not super sharp. And then we just go back again and that has sharpened things up a little bit. Now, next step is to denoise the image. So we'll go to denoising, click on that plus and click denoise image. And of course, this will automatically take care of the noise in the background. There we go. And then we will just save the image and uh, just leave the settings as default. And now we will bring up Cyril. And now we can drag and drop that new image that we got from Graxpert into Cyril. So of course the image looks dark right now. So we'll go down here where it says linear, click on that, and then just click on auto stretch. And we can actually select a high definition as well. So now we can see what the image looks like. So there is very little noise. It has also been sharpened, so it's looking good. I'll move this over to the center here so we can see it a little bit better. So in Cyril, these are the steps that I like to do. First step is color calibration. And to do that, we will go up here to image processing, click on color calibration and click on photometric color calibration. And uh, we can select which object this is just to make it easier for the software. So this is NGC 281. That was the name of this nebula. Click find. It shows up down here. Uh, then all you need to do is click OK. So as you can see, uh, the object has now been rotated to the correct orientation and the color has been corrected to a bit more of a natural color. The next step after that is to stretch the data using generalized hyperbolic stretch or histogram transformation. Right now the image is auto stretched, uh, but if we undo this and set it back to linear, this is what it actually looks like. Go up to image processing and generalized hyperbolic stretch. So first thing I like to do over here is uh, go up to generalized hyperbolic transformation, select linear stretch, zoom in to 100% or sorry, 100 times. And now we can see the histogram over here. If the histogram is too far to the right, uh, you may have to raise the black point value here a bit until the histogram is kind of, is, is very close to the left side. But in this case, the histogram is already pretty close to the left side. That means we don't have to do this step. So we'll just ignore that. Uh, go back to generalized hyperbolic uh, transform. Now the local stretch intensity, we want to set that to maximum. Uh, go down over here, auto stretch again. Uh, then we'll select a, a, an area here with no nebulosity. We just want the background. So an area without too many stars, but without any nebulosity. So something like that is good. And then you click on this little dropper tool and it'll automatically set the symmetry point. So that's kind of the midpoint over here. So now we can go back to auto stretch down here and set it back to linear. And now we can start making changes with the stretch factor. So you can see as I move this slider towards the right, the image starts to get brighter and brighter. And now you can adjust the stretch intensity. If you move this down, you can see that the brighter parts of the image in the center are now getting a little bit darker. So it's compressing the dynamic range a bit. Now you can increase the stretch factor a little bit more and you can compress the dynamic range a little bit more by bringing down the intensity. So you can see how that how that is affecting the image and that's pretty good. And then we can adjust the symmetry point a little bit more by using these plus or minus buttons. Uh, but I think that becomes a little bit too much. So what we can do is just select the value here instead of 39, we can try 45. See that darkens the background a little bit. Let's try 60. Okay. I think we are doing pretty well now. Let's do 55. Okay. So now it highlights the nebula fairly well, but the background is also fairly dark. So I think we're pretty good there. And once we're happy with the results over here, we can just click apply and click close. Now the next step after stretching the data 
is to remove the green cast if needed. If you notice any kind of a green uh, kind of glow in the background or a green cast, you can remove that. We can get rid of that little preview box we created just by clicking anywhere on the screen, left clicking. So we can go up to image processing and click remove green noise. And uh, this is almost always useful to do. Uh, if we click apply, click close. And next is adjust color saturation if needed. So that's step eight that I like to do. So we can go over here to color saturation. And uh, the things you can adjust is the amount. So if I move that up, it'll make the nebula more colorful. But of course, we want to keep it somewhat realistic. We don't want to push that too far. Click apply. And then our last step after color saturation is just to save your image. Just go up here to this downward facing arrow, click on that. <clears throat> we can save it in a couple of formats. Of course, I like to save it as a TIFF once and leave it as a 16 bit unsigned integer. Click save and then just save it again and select JPEG as the file type and then save that as well. Uh, quality 100%. Now, if we check that folder, we'll see I have this uh, three hours final JPEG and three hours final TIFF. And this is the image that I would want to share with everyone. So I think that's a really nice uh, image we got of this nebula. So our target for next month is a target that you do not want to miss. And I'm very excited to try to get some data on this object. And I'm hoping you'll be able to participate as well. The object we're trying to image is called TON618. And it is one of the largest black holes in the known universe. It's located between the Big Dipper and the constellation of Leo the Lion. So it comes up a little bit later at night, uh, but if you search for TON618 in a program like Stellarium, it will come up. And this is where it's located. And what we're hoping to see is, is the bright light being emitted uh, from the material falling into the black hole. Now, this object uh, weighs about 40 billion times more than our sun. It's about 30 to 40 times wider than our entire solar system and it's about 140 trillion times brighter than the sun. So this should be really exciting to image. And uh, this object is so far away that the light from it left about 10.8 billion years ago before the earth even existed. So managing to image this will be, will be a great feat with a sea star. Now, um, since you can't find this in the sea star database normally, uh, here is a guide I made for us to be able to do that. So first thing you'll have to do, of course, is to uh, connect your cell phone to your C star. And at the very bottom, you'll see this area uh, where it says Sky Atlas. Click on that. Next, you'll see this screen over here. Click down here where it says more. Then it'll go to this screen. Click on objects at the very top right, which I have highlighted. You'll end up at this screen. Click on customize. And under custom object, put in the name TON618. Put in RA as 12 hours, 29 minutes and 40 seconds. And DEC as minus 31 degrees, 20 arc minutes and 19 arc seconds. And once you put all of that in, click on add. And there it is under my favorites, it will appear at the very top as ton 618. And now if you click on that and click go to your C star will take you to ton 618 or where ton 618 is. And then uh, from there, you can collect as much data as you are able to. And then follow the instructions in the description of this video to send that data in. I hope you enjoyed that episode of C star roundup. Thank you for watching and clear skies.